All right, today's topic is trumpet. Um, we're going a little bit out of order in terms of these, but I thought this would be more applicable since so many of you are switching to trumpet right after spring break, that it would be better, better to talk about that before rather than um, after or during that transition over in that. Um, trumpet is really pretty basic in terms of the instrument itself in that. Um, as we look at a trumpet, all of you are very familiar with it. We have three valves. They're numbered closest to the face. One, two, three. We have a pinky ring, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Most trumpets come with a first valve saddle, which is a tuning slide that can be adjusted out. And then also, and this is not an option, there's also a, excuse me, a uh, third valve tuning slide here that comes out and out with a ring that is adjustable that will go through that. And we'll talk about hand position and so forth in just a second. You'll notice too that there is a main water key and then a third valve water key here um, and then you have tuning slides coming off the second valve and again off the first valve the one with the saddle on it right there um, hand position left hand and I'm giving you some diagrams and your hands out handouts to go over this too there are there are some different ways to do this and it does change based on hand size just a little bit but some things to keep in mind are the left hand bears all the weight of the instrument it bears all the weight of the instrument and because of that many well it used to be more beginning band directors prefer starting students on cornet than trumpet a cornet typically is about this long and the weight is more centered and so for the child it brings the arms closer to the body so they're not having to stretch out to make that full length for me that's not an issue but for a child it will be um, you know, it's gotten to the point though, a lot of programs just start kids on trumpet and that works fine too, but th don't be surprised if you run into people who prefer cornets um, during some category. Notice here I have my ring finger in the third valve slide and I should push that down when I do that and I can operate it with that. Some people prefer, this is slipping a little bit, putting their middle finger through instead. It's just preference. Maybe some really small-handed children might even put their pinky in there with their ring finger behind it to push and pull. I know that doesn't look very comfortable at all with me doing that, but um, you can do that. Um, some horns, you'll notice too, my, my little nut that goes on here is missing. Um, you want to get this third valve slide where it flows as easy as possible, almost like a trombone slide. And what this does is it keeps it from happening, what just happened right there, that it doesn't fall completely off and hit the floor. Okay? All right, we'll talk more about that in just a second. Um, finish on trumpet doesn't matter. You'll see most professional players prefer some form of silver of some kind or other in that, but really, truly, it's, it's, it's more of a mental uh, impact on the playing than probably anything that anybody in uh, your especially middle school public school experience is going to have an impression on one way or another okay um, mouthpiece trumpet mouthpiece much like a trombone mouthpiece except it is again much smaller we have the cup the rim cup from the outside and then the shank okay you'll notice looking in there that is very 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 narrow okay and uh, again the coffee stirrer idea works wonderfully for most students to do this so if they'll just position the straw with just an M face where they're thinking about focusing that air into a narrower airstream then position the straw in the mouthpiece, blow, gradually move this up so we get a seal, and then gradually remove the straw, keeping the air pressure up. And you generally end up with a pretty good amateur. What does a pretty good amateur look like? Well, for most people, as you can see, it's almost a 50-50 up and down. You'll see a slight variation on that depending on lip size and so forth. 
for most people, centered in the face, might be off just a little bit one way or another depending on teeth structure and such. Most people facially are not 100% symmetrical, so it might be off just a little bit. The other thing to remember though is almost all of us have a slight overbite. So that, just like on trombone, makes the mouthpiece coming straight out not a natural position. The mouthpiece wants to come down just a little bit because the lower teeth are a bit further back than the upper teeth, just slightly. So that's down. You can look at the angle right there for me. Okay, so it's down just a little bit. Again, marching band use and so forth really destroys that, but that's neither here nor there right at this point. Um, talked about left hand position with the ring and everything. Okay, right hand position. Right hand position is real important in that um, it you don't just like on the trombone slide you don't want to bear any weight on the slide you don't want to bear any weight with the right hand so um, we want to make sure our thumb fits between again if this is first second third valve first and second valve and then with that flat C shape just let the three valves the three fingers come over the three valves and then keep the pinky up in midair you can ask them to put on top we don't want to insert it in here for two reasons. One is there's a tendency to start pushing back on it towards the face, which adds tension and undue pressure against the embouchure. The other is our ring finger is our least responsive digit. For those of you that are serious about piano, you probably already know that. And if we free up our pinky and allow those two fingers to move together, it's, it's better to respond than just by itself you lock that finger down, that pinky, that's a real struggle to move that. So we want that freedom. Um, it's few, just a few people, I, I actually used to know some band directors in San Antonio that would ask the music stores to remove this ring off of the brand new horns before they were delivered to the children. So there just was no ring there. What this really serves a purpose on is in marching situations, it does give you another grip. Um, to hang on to it where if you had to remove this hand for some reason you had it um, and that's about it really but we want to keep that pinky you know on top or better yet just in midair don't lock it down there okay um, some some different concerns about angle of fingers for me I'm more of a flat C believer um, getting the this part of the finger on the valve. Some people are about an, uh, like a capital C with it more up and down. I don't find that to be as natural a motion. So again, personal preference. Um, you'll do what you're going to do with that, but watch that. Okay. Um, just like on trombone, mouthpiece insertion, put it in, give it a half twist, friction maintains it in through that. Um, Articulation is essentially the same as trombone. Um, everything is just more focused. If you think about playing in the very, very upper range of trombone, you're playing trumpet in essence. Again, just like on trombone, the only thing that really impacts what's going to happen in the mouthpiece and the sound, or excuse me, what's going to impact the sound is what's going on inside the mouthpiece. So again, even though this has much more resistance, about twice the resistance of trombone, just by nature of the fact that the tubing is half the size and half the bore of a, a trombone, because um, you're going to be playing an octave higher than trombone, that um, that resistance, we still don't want tension in any of the face. It, it all happens, all of the, the, the contact and, and the air pressure and such, the only thing that really matters is what's going on inside that small cup and then through the uh, shaft. Alrighty, a um, couple things to keep in mind in terms of maintenance. I'm going to take a valve out here and these depending on the brand can be slightly different. These valves on this Bach have a spring here in the casing. Some cheaper horns have the spring in the bottom and it's a loose device. But all valves have, and I hope you can see that, guides. And right there at the, about the middle point, you see that white plastic. I'm going to set this down. This white plastic right here, that's a guide. And you can see one side is wide 
and the other side is narrower. Then inside the trumpet, oh, you can't see that at all, is a, there's a notch with one side is wide, one side is narrower. Um, the three valves are not identical. They, in most cases, almost all cases, I don't know if you can see that or not right here, they are labeled one, two, three. They have to be in the right place or they won't work. But it is imperative that that valve goes in and catches in the guides. If it's backwards or isn't in the guide, you can't get air through the horn. Okay, so that's got to be in there correctly. All right. As far as oiling, we don't want beginning students to remove these all the way, which is really the proper way to oil it. So what we want to do instead is take the valve out partially, apply oil on the piston portion. You don't want to put any up here because this isn't touching anything. That's just the, the casing for the spring on the piston portion. Then put it in, get it to lock, latch, retighten up the cap, and then work that oil in different angles so it spreads around that, that valve oil. Uh, with beginner horns they probably need to oil all three valves um, probably once a week maybe once every two weeks if they do that. Um, you're also going to have to do some instruction in cleaning these valves at some point but that isn't something you have to do right off the bat and I wouldn't recommend doing it until later on. It might be a good thing like right before Christmas or something to in instruct kids to do that. Um, and uh, walk them through that sort of a process that there. Um, on this slide, the main tuning slide, we want to use like we used on a trombone tuning slide and had anhydrous lanolin or some sort of lubricant that is very thick and doesn't dry out easily with anhydrous lanolin in it. Okay, and again the, the trumpet is built to play sharp with this all the way in so we want to pull it out a ways to play and then on the third valve slide we want to use a different slide grease and we want to use something thinner and often what people do is they'll use a thinner grease and then they'll put a couple dots of valve oil on there with it to thin it out even more and work that in and then that works better and better it does help if the horns manufactured properly some of the horns some of you guys are going to get these third valve slides are not going to work as good as others so we'll work on those when we get them in class and you'll get some first-hand knowledge on that. Um, some observable characteristics that you might see that indicate success or failure, especially the failure, is if you see constant distortion to be able to get a sound in that, then you may have a child that really isn't set to play trumpet. Um, you really can't tell by thick lips, thin lips, that sort of thing. Um, you just kind of have to go by how they can get the vibration going and so forth. Um, and if they're if it's just really tedious, um, a larger mouthpiece instrument, brass instrument, will probably be better suited for them. Some children, if they can't get a sound on a trumpet mouthpiece, if you have them experiment with a trombone mouthpiece or even a tuba mouthpiece, and they get a buzz going, so they get the feel of a buzz, then go back to the trumpet mouthpiece. Sometimes that will trigger the right response because they're just not conceptually getting the idea of what needs to happen within that. Um, as far as um, materials and stuff, probably the two best student line horns, in my opinion, are the Yamaha student line horn and the King student line horn. Um, and then the more important thing, just like on almost all instruments, is the mouthpiece. And generally, all beginning trumpet mouthpieces come with a 7C, which is a medium cup, medium opening it's just kind of medium all the way around however Yamaha's do not they come with a smaller mouthpiece and so if you're going to get Yamaha horns you want to make sure they actually have excuse me a 7c mouthpiece there are some schools of thoughts that want to start beginners with a bigger mouthpiece like a 5b and then better players once their lips are very strong like moving to a bigger mouthpiece so their lips have more control of what's going on Beginners need the reinforcement and support that the smaller mouthpiece, the somewhat smaller mouthpiece has. You don't want it to be super small because you want it to be open enough to get a free flowing sound. All right, so a 7C, Bach 7C mouthpiece there. Um, just want to call your attention to a couple of things that are within your things. There are some handouts from the internet on here about everything I've talked about, including practicing, diagrams of hand position, 
Um, the harmonic series, which we'll be talking about more in class in terms of tuning tendencies, especially with the fifth and sixth partials, which is very important understanding those in um, teaching of trumpet. Uh, again, more charts. And then for you that are really, really interested in it, there are some diagrams about forming aperture and embouchure that you may find helpful for future use as far as placing things and such. All right, that about concludes it with trumpet. It's pretty straightforward in that, and you're going to get the opportunity to play for a long period of time starting soon. Thank you very much.